Global Hawk was built to fly at extreme altitude for long periods of time. Its wingspan is vast, stretching over 116 feet. Adding to Global Hawk's outlandish appearance is the V-shaped tail. The tail extends up from beneath the engine, 44 feet from the nose of the aircraft. The Global Hawk's endurance puts the world's biggest passenger planes to shame. It will fly 5,000 miles, patrol the skies for over 24 hours, and then make a six-hour journey to a friendly airbase, all under the power of one Allison turbofan engine. But the Global Hawk isn't invisible to radar. When the Air Force doesn't want anyone to know they're around, they rely on stealth. Today, the Air Force has stealth bombers and attack planes, but in the future, they hope to fly a stealthy, unmanned spy plane. The system is designed uh, much like the B-2 was in that it's an all-wing body configuration with no vertical surfaces. It really is a relatively simple design. Uh, you can see it, it basically is a bunch of straight lines. All of that is for stealth reasons. It is basically all fuel other than the payloads and the structural weight. It, it weighs about 8,600 pounds. It flies for about 12 hours. And that endurance is predominantly driven by the kinds of missions we want to fly. The most dangerous missions of all flying over hostile territory, looking at targets defended by anti-aircraft guns and surface-to-air missiles in skies that are filled with enemy fighters. Until its retirement, these missions were flown by the Air Force's mighty SR-71 Blackbird. In its third decade of life, the Blackbird is still the world's reigning speed champion. Even so, its age has made it too expensive for operational spy flights. What used to do the Dark Star mission was the SR-71. Uh, it had the ability to basically overfly the majority of heavily defended targets through speed and altitude. We attacked it from the other direction. Rather than using speeds and speed and altitude, we used low observables technology, stealth technology. Like the Global Hawk, the Dark Star's flight is programmed ahead of time on a computer. Its first flight was over Rogers Dry Lake at Edwards Air Force Base. On March 29, 1996, Dark Star left the ground for the first time. The Outrider isn't nearly as sophisticated as the Dark Star or Global Hawk. It's meant to be flown off rough, unpaved airfields, close to the front line. Soldiers will use it to spot enemy troops and tanks, and sailors can send it looking for unwanted ships. The Outrider communicates with soldiers through a digital data link system. To make certain that communication lines could track Outrider as it moved, engineers attached a receiver to a small Robinson helicopter. A ground terminal was able to track the helicopter without an eruption. The first few flights of the Outrider were carried out using remote control. These days, every pilot flies a simulator before stepping in their plane. The same was true with the Outrider, only now it's done using remote control instead of a stick and rudder. Then, on March 7th, 1997, Outrider pilots prepared for the real thing. Computer-aided designs and wind tunnel testing predicted that it would leave the ground without a hitch, but nobody was certain what the unpredictable Texas breeze held in store. Engineers thought that Outrider would leave the ground at 70 knots. Then, at only 53 knots, 
it leapt into the air. The key to the Outrider system is a camera pod that swivels on a 360 degree axis. It's not built to take pictures of entire regions, just the parts of the battlefield important to the soldiers. Providing the pictures is a color video camera with a 10 to 1 zoom lens. The camera is aligned with a forward-looking infrared system. Infrared gives Outrider a view of the battlefield under the protective cloak of darkness. This donut-shaped hovercraft looks like it belongs in a 1950s science fiction movie. It's called the Cypher, a six and a half foot UAV built to satisfy the military's need for a spy platform that takes off and lands vertically. Like other UAVs, the mission is watched closely on off-the-shelf computer screens at the base camp. The display is similar to the Outrider. On the right is a bird's eye view shown in real time. On the left is the map of the flight plan. At any time during the flight, the operator can change Cypher's course by clicking a new spot on the map. This remote controlled UAV uses a different approach. It's called a tilt body and it may revolutionize the way we fly. The tilt body UAV was pioneered at the world's oldest airport in College Park, Maryland. Its design dates to the early 80s when it underwent wind tunnel testing at the nearby university. Today, the Scorpion UAV has returned to its home state for study at NASA's Goddard Research Center. Patrick Coronado is the program manager for the Scorpion. This would be considered a standard configuration of a normal aircraft or a fixed wing aircraft. Uh, the fuselage is pointing in the direction of flight and so are the wings, they're pointing straight away. But in this free wing tilt body aircraft, the fuselage can tilt up to a predefined angle as you can see here. As you can see, the wings will maintain the same angle of attack as it was in its normal standard uh, forward pointing direction. The result is an airplane that cannot be stalled. 